name is Nina Kim and I work with uh, different symphony orchestras around Florida, uh, including uh, Imperial Symphony Orchestra, um, Brevard Symphony Orchestra, Venice Symphony Orchestra, Villages Philharmonic and some others. I'm uh, originally from Russia and uh, moved to Florida in 2014 for my master's degree at the University of South Florida. I first started playing the violin when I was six. A music teacher in our kindergarten noticed that I had a good ear, so she talked to her friend who was a violin teacher, so she suggested to my mom that I start violin lessons. From the very early age, I was dreaming to become a professional violinist. I remember, you know, falling asleep and dreaming as I'm playing on the stage before the huge audience and all this applause, and I can play anything, like all kinds of virtuosic works with ease. So this is what I was dreaming about when I was a child. So that, of course, helped me a lot. Um, another motivation for me was participating in different competitions. So ever uh, since I was seven years old, I was participating in competitions every single year. So that uh, certainly gave me an additional boost to practice and continue what I was doing. The question about a favorite composer is probably one of the trickiest for every musician because there is no such thing as one single favorite composer. The father of all is Johann Sebastian Bach. He um, composed uh, quite a few substantial violin works that are just genius and every single violinist plays them. Johannes Brahms is another uh, composer that I really, really love. Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart is another big name that is just very unique. A uh, composer that has this, you know, brilliance and happiness and liveliness in his music. So I love playing Mozart as well. Uh, I love Baroque music, all of it. <laughs> Just uh, there's so much sophistication and purity in it. Along this technical process, there is a lot of room for interpretation always. And interpretation is one of the probably the trickiest things to talk about when you are talking about music because there are so many amazing players out there and have been always and so and every single one of them has uh, his own interpretation and you cannot say that this is the right way and this is the wrong way so it's all very subjective and often all the technical aspects that we are working on they depend on your uh, personal interpretation. So um, the way you hear the music, the way uh, it can also change over time. As I learn the piece, as I get to know uh, the, uh, all the little details, I may change all the little things to, in order to create the, the sound that I really want to produce. And of course, uh, an important part of this process is some research because uh, first thing that you do when you pick a piece uh, by the composer that you don't know much about, you have to read about uh, the composer, where he lived, where, um, uh, geographically and when he lived, um, what time, what circumstances he composed his music. And this is, of course, is uh, a very crucial part of creating an interpretation. Because what um, musicians do is, we are just a, a deliverers of a message from maybe centuries ago. Of course, we, we put some of our view into the music, but uh, I think one of the most important things when we perform music is to deliver the message that the composer intended in his piece. As a rule, the older the piece, the uh, harder it is to find out what was the true way to perform it. Uh, for example, um, for Baroque music, um, centuries ago, even the violin, it looked very different from contemporary violin. It didn't have some certain parts, so it wasn't as virtuosic as today. It wasn't as projective, and uh, the bow as well, it was much lighter, shorter. So there are a lot of these little things that uh, affected the sound of the violin of that century. I think uh, classical music is one of the most 
profound types of music of today. This music requires some knowledge, some uh, experience in listening to this type of music. And it is harder to perceive as compared with, let's say, pop songs or rock songs. But the harder it is to learn how to listen, what to listen for, the more depth and the more fascination you uh, achieve while listening to this. Because it has so much complexity within it, the more complex music, the more emotionally overwhelming it may be, the deeper it goes inside of your heart and your soul, and it stays with you for longer. It does require more sophistication and more intellectual perception than uh, lighter music, but it does leave a bigger impact on, on your personality.